Hello and welcome to the vlog. It is an absolutely gorgeous midwinter's day. Beautiful blue skies, the sun is shining, it has been cold overnight, there is ice that is even now melting off the top of the boat. And what I thought I'd do in today's vlog is talk about whether solar power is any use at all in winter. Most winter days are not as nice as today, but what I'm going to do is take some readings off the solar panels, see how much power they're able to put into the batteries today, but also over the next day or so as well, if it's overcast, if it's rainy, and we'll do some calculations and work out whether you can get by on solar in the winter months. Here's my solar array. Two 240 watt panels, so 480 watts theoretical maximum. I've seen it bring in over 30 amps in the middle of summer. Being midwinter, the sun is low on the horizon throughout the day, and yes, there are some trees in the way too, though they're sufficiently distant not to cause a disruptive shadow, but rather just dim what light there is. Because of the way I've secured my panels, I can't tilt them fully towards the sun, but I've put them over as far as I can. That shadow on the edge is a little helper who's turned up to see what's going on. He wants to know how many amps I'm getting. It's a good question. And the answer is 2 amps at 13.5 volts. But is 2 amps enough? What does 2 amps even mean? Is it going to power the boat? The only way to work that out is to do an energy audit. And that means going through the boat, looking at every single piece of electrical equipment you have, noting down how much it draws, totting it all up, and then seeing if over the course of a day your solar panels will generate enough for your needs. One of the biggest drawers in any boat is going to be the refrigerator, because by and large it's on 24-7, albeit that it's only really drawing power for about half that time, as it turns itself on and off as the temperature inside gets warmer, it turns itself on, then once it's cold it turns itself off. So the typical draw is about half the time. My fridge is a 12 volt fridge, which is to say it's running directly off the battery power. It's not a mains fridge, it's not running through the inverter. I don't actually know how much it draws. I did read through the instruction manual and couldn't see it written anywhere. But on the forums, generally speaking, it seems to be that 12 volt fridges will take about 40 amp hours per day. I do have a microwave which draws a lot of power from the batteries. This one's only a 700 watt model, but that's the cooking power. The actual consumption is much more, as the label on the back shows. It'll actually use 1150 watts. That's 96 amps at 12 volts. All the lights on my boat were switched to LED when I bought it. They're expensive to buy, but they last for years and they draw very, very little power. A typical LED bulb is just one watt. Anytime you turn on a tap and the water pump runs, that pump is of course drawing a little bit of power. So that applies to the kitchen sink, the bathroom sink and also the shower. How much power your water pump draws depends on the make and model. So you need to ferret about in wherever your water pump is stored and have a good look. Either get the model number and then and go and look it up on Google or something. In some cases, it's actually written on the device itself. What I've got here is both the water pump and the whale gulper, which sucks away the wastewater from the shower. Remember to account for that in your calculations. The whale gulper doesn't say on it on its drawer is, as far as I can see, but the water pump says 5.2 amps maximum at 12 volts. Now, obviously, they're only going to run for short periods of time. Probably the longest they'll run is when you're having a shower, and that's only a couple of minutes. Nonetheless, 5.2 amps for two minutes, plus whatever the whale gulper is using at the same time. If your toilet has an electric flush, then you need to account for just a few seconds of that each day. Not all boats bother with a television, of course, but I do, and what's worse, it's a mains TV, not 12 volts, so it has to be run off the inverter, which inevitably involves a little bit of power loss and power draw through the inverter itself. Inverters are inherently slightly inefficient, so they don't put out as much power as they actually draw. And what's more, even when you're not running anything off the mains, if the inverter is switched on, it's using a tiny bit of power even on standby, a bit like having your telly on standby. So there's a little bit of a battery drain just from having the inverter switched on at all. 
but I'm really not too bothered. Look, it draws 45 watts, which is near enough four and a half amps at 12 volts. So even if I watch it for three hours a night, that's uh, 13, 14 amp hours worth of battery. If we tot up everything I use and allow a bit extra in case I've missed anything, it comes to 80 amp hours per day. But can my solar generate what I need? It's a quarter to 12, nearly midday. The sun is as overhead as it's going to get. And look at this, nine amps at 14.8 volts. That is a hefty amount of charge. So you might think, well, as long as every winter day is like today, all is gonna be hunky-dory. But it's really not as good as it looks. I happen to know from previous calculations that I use about 80 amp hours per day. So even though nine amps coming in off the solar looks good, I would need nine hours of full sunlight generating nine amps to give me the amount of power I use per day. Now this is winter, sun up is about eight o'clock in the morning, sun down about four o'clock in the afternoon. That's only eight hours. And of course the sun isn't giving me full strength throughout that entire eight hours. It starts off down here, goes up a bit, peaks at midday, and then tails off again throughout the afternoon. There's no way I'm going to get even my moderate 80 amp hours into the battery from the sun, even on a gorgeous sunny day like today. I might get about half that requirement. Now you might think the answer is more solar, and indeed I have got space for another panel just over the top of those air vents, but ahead of that you're running into the center lines where they attach and the stove chimney and then the gangplank and the pole so really i've only got space for one more panel and i already have 480 watts of solar on my roof which is quite a substantial array i know of many boats that have perhaps two or 300 watts so yes i could add another 240 watt panel but it still wouldn't bring me in as much power as i'm using and my 80 amp hour calculation didn't even include using the laptop which is quite power hungry so there's yet more draw it is not looking promising for being solely reliant on solar during the winter it's now three o'clock in the afternoon and the sun, as you can see, is already starting to fade. I've had the laptop on through the afternoon. I used the microwave at lunchtime, had the telly on for the lunchtime news. So the batteries have definitely been used and drained and they are in need of a good charge. But with the sun disappearing, how well are the solar panels able to cope at this time of the afternoon? Let's have a look. And the answer is pretty dismal. I remind you, it's only mid-afternoon and I'm getting just 0.2 of an amp with the sun about to disappear. It's now the following morning and by heck is it chilly today. There is a chill breeze in the air. The canal was iced over when I woke up this morning, although it has now melted again and the temperature's probably hovering around one or two degrees Celsius. So it's a much more typical winter's day. But from the solar perspective, the important thing to note is that it is quite overcast, bright, these are not dark rain clouds, but it is distinctly overcast. So let's go and have a look and see how much power my panels are pulling in in this kind of weather. And the answer is a fairly miserable half an amp, which is really not very good going at all. All these numbers are all very well, of course, but you may be asking, what is the point? What is the conclusion? Well, the conclusion is that it is perfectly possible, of course, to cruise during winter away from shore power. You don't need it, but you are going to have to cruise or otherwise run your engine to charge your batteries. If perhaps you want to cruise, stop for a day and cruise on, assuming your battery bank is sufficiently sized and in good condition, that'll probably be no problem either. But if you want to cruise somewhere, park up, and then rely on the solar to recharge your batteries as you're sitting there, it is almost certainly not going to happen for you. You'll have to run the engine to charge the batteries, even if you're just sitting there running it at idle, or have a generator, or investigate wind turbines, or some other means of generating electricity. Even on the nice sunny days, there isn't really enough sun, even with a decent sized solar array, to generate even a modest amount of daily power consumption. So I hope 
that is in some way useful if you are considering winter cruising, considering solar power and so on and so forth. Any questions, drop them down below. I'm well aware there will be someone who says, well, I've got 10,000 watts of solar and I never had a problem. Well, well, fine. Generally speaking, I think it is safe to say most people don't have 10,000 watts of solar. So the average typical solar setup in typical British winter weather is not going to provide sufficient power. Think of it as a top up to whatever you've already put in the batteries from the engine. Anyway, any questions, drop them down below. I'll do my best to answer. Thanks as always for watching. Cheerio.